Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. It's nice to have some help from a fairy godmother once in a while, but this lucky girl rises from the ashes to discover she only needs to be herself to find true happiness and a prince. Cinderella. There was once a lovely young girl named Cinderella who lived with her father, her stepmother, and her two stepsisters. All in all, Cinderella was fairly content with this arrangement until one fateful day. I'm sorry. So the stepmother, with the help of her two daughters, began immediate preparations for a most impressive funeral, making sure that all the right people would be in attendance. Cinderella was the only one who truly mourned the death of her father. Father's really gone. It's difficult for us all. Well, enough gloom for one day. I think we should start to reorganize the household. We've got to pitch in and make the best of bad times. Cinderella, I think it would be lovely if you did all the cooking. Fine. And my lovely daughters, Arlene and Bertha. You won't do any cooking. I can handle that. Uh, Cinderella, you should wax the floors, too, dear. Arlene and Bertha, you won't. And now, last but not least, the sweeping, polishing, cleaning, scouring, dishes, trash, gardening, bed making, and various miscellaneous chores, including laundry and everything else, will be done by... Cinderella. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Uh, <clears throat> I don't mean to be rude, but isn't this arrangement just a bit lopsided? Oh, well, I'm not finished. Bertha, your duties will include bathing yourself, brushing your own hair, and maintaining an attractive appearance. See, I'm not complaining. And Arlene, you'll be in charge of relaxing, wearing fashionable clothing, and occasionally answering the door. Oh, Mother, I hate that door thing. All right, Cinderella, you'll answer the door. And I will be in charge of being in charge. Well, we'd better get to work. Oh.
It seems to me that I still have more chores than anyone else, and I was just Well, consider maybe... yourself lucky, Cinderella, that I allow you to remain in my house. And since you are now legally my daughter, you must obey my every command. And now, I command you to work. <laughs> and work she did. From sunrise to sunset, day in and day out, Cinderella was responsible for every household chore imaginable. And then some. My name is Edgar. Is Cinderella Bell? What's it to you? Uh, well, you see, we went to school together many years ago, and I just got back into town and thought I'd stop by and surprise her. Yeah, she's not here. Uh, yeah, she's dead. She died. Oh, no. What a tragedy. I, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, we got over it. Bye. <laughs> Was that the door? Uh oh, uh, just some boy named Edgar. Really? Edgar from school? Yes. He came by to ask me out. And to say that uh, he hated your guts. It wasn't that thoughtful. <laughs> Getting warmer. Oh, good enough. Stepmother? Yes. May I ask you a question? I must know why you and my, my stepsisters treat me with such contempt. You know, I try to be kind and forgiving, but the nicer I am, the worse you treat me. The answer is very simple, my dear. You see, nature has been very kind to you. You've been blessed with incredible beauty, a sweet disposition, and a loving heart. These are qualities that are totally absent from myself and my daughters. Therefore, in order to balance the scales of nature, which have been unfairly tipped in your favor, it is only right that we should treat you like dirt. Well, I'm not sure that I agree with that logic. Well, think of it as a good deed. You kiss up to us, we despise you, and everybody is happy. But I'm not happy. Splendid. Good day. I'm the appointed messenger to His Highness Prince Henry, heir to the throne and son of King Rupert III. Come in. Please, come in. We're wild about royal messengers, especially cute ones. <laughs> Would you like something to drink? Perhaps some ham? No, thank you. Uh, Cinderella, go wash his horse. It's the least we can do. <clears throat> I cordially, that is he, Prince Henry, cordially invites you to attend his royal autumn ball, the theme which will be autumn. 
autumn. The ball will include a scrumptious buffet, unlimited champagne, and dancing to the melodic sounds of Arturo and his band of merry cellists. <laughs> RSVP by midnight tomorrow. So until then, I bid thee so long. Adieu. And so Cinderella was ordered to begin work at once, measuring, designing, and sewing two new beautiful gowns for her stepsisters. Tighter, tighter. But, Mother, I won't be able to breathe. Well, one night of suffocation isn't going to kill you. Measure her now, Cinderella. Will you be wearing to the ball, Cinderella? Me? Why, I just assumed that I wasn't going. Well, of course you're going. Well, we thought you knew that. You mean I was invited to the royal ball? girls, this is your one chance to nab a prince. Oh, be careful, Ninny. The hair must look absolutely perfect. And remember, girls, don't act too smart. Men are intimidated by intelligent women. What do you mean, intelligent? Oh, never mind. Now remember, be kind, be gracious, be charming. And whatever you do, don't be yourself. Have a good time! I think I'll just stay home alone. Sit by the fireplace. Please, enough of this boo-hoo, and what is your problem? I want, I want to go to ball. You want a ball, a round, sort of bouncy thing? No. Oh, I was just fooling. Lighten up. I know you want to go to that ball. You do? Of course I do. Who are you? I'm your fairy godmother. Didn't you see me poof next to you? I didn't know I had a fairy godmother. Oh, most people don't. You see, we keep a very low profile. And we're very selective about when and where we offer assistance. I mean, we can't just come popping in for every little problem. Why not? Well, it wouldn't be fair. Besides, solving your own problems is part of growing up. I just show up for special occasions. Well, you know, it's just that I wish that you would have been there when my stepsisters tied me to Lucky, the banister. Lucky, do you want to go to the ball or sit here all night chewing the fat? I want to go to the ball more than anything in the world. Good choice. 
Well, now, first thing, you need a horse. What is the matter with me, a coach? You need a nice coach. You gotta arrive at that ball in style with dash. You gotta make that royalty stand up and salute and say, who is that girl? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, what can I turn into a coach? The stove? Well, it's too greasy. Rug? Magic carpet? No, that's no trick. Something round. A vegetable. We have some pumpkins growing in the garden. Pumpkin? Yes, that's good. Oh, <laughs> I like it. Round, orange, autumn. Well, now, come on. Let's go find a pumpkin. <sighs> now, stand back. This could be dangerous. Pumpkins aren't hollow, are they? Don't they have that gooey, stringy stuff inside them? Yeah, and seeds. Seeds? You don't want gigantic seeds inside of your coach, do you? No, I should say not. We gotta dig them out. Oh. It's not that I'm afraid of hard work. In fact, I used to enjoy helping around the house. It's just that now I do everything and they don't even say thank you. Those swan. I don't mean to complain, but they took all my clothes and they threw me out of my own bedroom and now I have to sleep on the floor in the kitchen. Now I'm steamed. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn them into logs. Oh no, don't do that. Well, then I'll turn them into little furry animals. That'll fix their wagons. I don't know, maybe they can't help the way that they are. There. All cleaned out. Now, let's get this show on the road. Well, don't you have to say some magic words or something? Honey, I'm way beyond that. some horses, right? Well, I thought I'd hitch myself up to the harness and pull you to the ball myself, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got a laugh out of you. So flick your magic wand so we can have some horses. Oh, sweetheart, you gotta understand. I can't turn nothing into something. I can only turn something into something else. Any ideas? Well, there's some snails in the garden. They make awful slow horses. There's some mice in the living room. Mice, that's it. Good. <laughs> oh, speed a little critter. I can catch cockroaches better. Oh, there's two, there's two. I got him. One. We need a coachman, quick. How about a rat? Good, that's right. Oh, ugly little thing. You look better. Go dress like this? Of course you can. You'll be one of a kind. The only girl dressed in soot. 
gotcha. I like you. You make life fun. Oh, shucks. Here we go. Those are made of glass, so don't go kicking any rocks or anything. It's just so... I mean... I don't know what to say. <laughs> You're welcome. to be home by midnight. Why? Because at midnight, the magic ends. Your coach will again become a pumpkin. Your horses will become mice. Your coachman will become a rat. And you will again be dressed in rags. Trust me, this is no joke. I'll be home by midnight, I promise. That's my girl. Now go enjoy. Coachman, drive on. <laughs> I love my work. Such a lovely dress. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Prince Henry. For what? For kissing my hand. I'll never wash it again. Thank you. I guess she liked it. <laughs> Excuse me, fair maiden. Something in your eye? <laughs> no, I was just giving you a little signal. Oh, no, 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 no. Goodbye. One now. Ew, he's ugly. <laughs> oh, who cares? He's an aristocrat. Arlene, will you quit stuffing your face? Where's some more of those crunchy things? There's Prince Henry now. Mm. Hurry up or you'll miss your chance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Prince Henry. <laughs> Hello, what? Ah. Oh. Glad you're enjoying the food. Well? Well, what? Well, don't you find my daughters fascinating? Um, considering we've never met? Oh, I knew you'd like us. We can dance, too. Yes, and you can dance with both of us at the same time. Oh, oh. oh. I think I hear my father, the king, calling. seen anything so beautiful in your life? No. I'll never forget this as long as I live. Me neither. Are you all right? Oh. You wouldn't want to dance, would you? 
I wouldn't. I didn't think so. I mean, yes, of course. I, I'd love to. Thank you. No. Thank you. We're going to take a little break now, but we'll be back real soon, ladies and gentlemen, so don't go away. I've never danced that way before. You were magnificent. Listen, it takes two to waltz. You looking for someone? Boyfriend, right? I knew it. Actually, I was looking for Prince Henry. Do you know him? Yes. Prin yes, I know him quite well. He's a um, charming young fellow. Uh, there he is. I No, I don't see him just now. Hmm. There he is. There he is. He's standing right next to you. No. At your service. You mean you're? Oh, my. I, I had no idea. And you are? I am very pleased to meet you. Oh, the pleasure is my pleasure. I mean, it's all mine. I'm so embarrassed I didn't recognize you. Don't be, please. I find it quite refreshing. I get tired of everybody knowing who I am wherever I go. But of course, it's hard to stay anonymous when your face is on all the money. It's a nice face. No. Hi, Henry. Remember us? <gasps> oh, what a gorgeous dress. Yeah, how much did it cost? Oh, it was just a little something I pooped together. Poofed? Put. I, I mean, put together. You know something? You could come over to our house and visit sometime. Yeah, we could get to be best friends. That would be nice. And you could come, too. Of course. <laughs> Most obnoxious woman I've ever met. You must be hungry. You like fruit? Oh, we're all out of fruit. Except for some melon balls. Um, you wait here and I'll be right back. Hello. 
lonely maiden? Quite a bash, huh? Name's Alfred. I'm very famous. Can I help you? Nah. Oh, you... She's with you. Oh, I didn't know. Disappear, Alfred. Okay. That must be what's known as chivalry. For the next few hours, Cinderella had the most enchanting evening of her life, gaining the admiration and affection of everyone with her natural charm and beauty. Offhand, I'd say you were the head of the ball. Well, offhand, I'd say you're the most charming prince I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Oh. Well, then, maybe you wouldn't mind if I saw you again sometime, maybe. What time is it? Who cares? Please, what time is it? Quarter to twelve. Wait, please! Aren't you? Oh, fairy godmother, I had the most wonderful night of my life. Well, don't just stand there swoon and tell me all about it. Well, I walked in, and everyone stopped and stared at me. And the prince, he was so handsome, and he was by my side all night. And we danced, and we talked, and we had melon balls, and I really liked the prince a lot. So you're telling me you had a good time. Oh, and I owe it all to you. Rubbish! You did it all yourself. Well, the cake was already made. All I did was add the frosting. But it was real, wasn't it? It wasn't just a dream, right? What's reality? Does anybody know? done exactly like her. Oh, yeah, everyone knows the way to a prince's heart is through your hair. Well, sleeping beauty. <laughs> How was the ball? We were a smash. Yes, Prince Henry fell in love with us. But you never guessed what happened. The most beautiful princess in the world came to the ball, and no one knew who she was. <laughs> yes, but then she just ran out for no reason. It was so rude. Yeah, you could tell Prince Henry was very upset. Mm, he was. Too bad you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Hi, son. How was the ball? It was terrible, Father. Ah, oh, I know, I hate him too. About five, ten minutes of that chit chat, yakety yak. I'm gone. I go off to the kitchen, sniff a little brandy. Have you ever talked to that chef, Jacques? <laughs> He's a heck of a nice guy. You feeling a little blue? I'm in love, Father. I see. She was. She was the most wonderful creature that ever walked the face of the earth. Let me tell you something about women, son. They're different from men. This is serious, father. We were having a terrific time. When all of a sudden, for no reason at all, she just ran off. Oh, you're a little hard to get play, eh? Who is this mysterious woman? I don't know who she is. I don't even know where she's from. All I know is I have to see her again. Well, you know she likes to come to fancy parties, don't you? So throw another ball. Alert the press. Leak it to the town crier. Trust me, she'll come. That's a terrific idea. We'll have another <laughs> ball tomorrow. 
Leave up the decorations. Prepare the melon ball. Henry, Henry, I'm a little pooped. Maybe you better wait till next week. Yes, you're probably right. But leave those decorations up anyway. Save a little money. Is your faith? Oh, you're here. <laughs> oh, there's another ball, and I was oh, wondering if you might. Darling, I have some bad news. Last week, I lost my magical powers. Maybe something I add. I don't know. Ha <laughs> ha! Gotcha. <laughs> oh, darling, I wouldn't let you down. I love you. <laughs> now let's see. What was it? A pumpkin and some rodents. Follow me. Son, forget it. She's not going to show. Why don't you come back inside and join the party? I'll just wait a few more minutes. I'll be in the kitchen. You didn't want to waste any time, did you? Not tonight. Well, we'll try the old three-in-one method. Will that work? If they don't explode. Where is your glass slippers? I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I broke them. I, I was just kicking down the cobblestones, and then you, all of a sudden... What? Gotcha. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Now, does my happy little princess remember what happens at midnight? Yes, yes, everything changes back. Pumpkin, mice, rat, and ragged clothing. That's right, don't forget, midnight. I won't. Thank you. Have a good time. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And if you do, just don't. <laughs> Crazy kid. I knew it. I just knew you'd come. I was afraid you might not want to see me again after the way I ran off. Are you kidding? You're the reason I'm having this ball. Really? Come on. Let's not waste any more time. Introduce me. We're dancing, Father. So, I'm the king. Come on, introduce me. Hello, I heard so much about you. Can you wait until later, please? Good. I need to get a huffer. Henry, 
since you're more experienced in these matters, maybe you can tell me why we feel so comfortable together. Sure, that's easy. I have no idea. All I know is I couldn't stop thinking about you all week. You too? I, I felt empty, like there was a part of me missing. No, that's exactly how I felt. But I don't feel that way now. Me neither. I wonder, do you, do you suppose that's what love is? It's a possibility. Well, if it's not, it should be. I just wish I knew more about this sort of thing. Do you know anything about kissing? Yes. I'm almost certain it has something to do with the lips. Like mine? Yes. They get very close together. Almost touching. Hmm. One more time. So soon. Live dangerously. Is it 11 o'clock? I think it's 12. No! Not again! Where did she go? Who, sire? The princess. Beautiful woman with the... She just came right this way. I didn't notice her. I just saw her with my own eyes come right out the door. This door? Don't be an idiot, man. I wasn't here, sir. I... Actually, your highness, sir, your prince, sir, I... I know. It's hers. Fairy Godmother, where are you? It's not fair. It's all just a cruel joke. I don't like your sense of humor anymore. And I'm hopelessly in love and I'll never see him again. I wish there had never been any magic. And I wish you had never come here. Because then I would never have known what I was missing. She doesn't love me, Father. Nonsense, son. I was watching you two all evening. Though I must admit she... she is a strange one, scampering off like that all the time. I just wish I knew her name. You still don't know her name? What have you been calling her, hey, you? One thing's for certain. She has incredibly tiny feet. That's it. You issue a proclamation. You say, whatsoever it slippereth, say, 
whomsoever this say that you will marry the girl whose foot fits this glass slipper yes that's a terrific idea well of course that's why i'm king and so the prince and his messenger began their search for the rightful owner of the glass slipper Naturally, they started with the ladies of the court. Mm -hmm. When that failed, they set out for the countryside, stopping at every house that contained a likely prospect. The prince continued his search for several weeks, but to no avail. Oh, mother, this hurts! I've told you, Arlene, that glass slipper is supposedly very tiny. You have got to shrink those feet. You know something? I'm pretty sure I lost a glass slipper. Yes. I'm almost positive. My feet are killing me. Their feet are killing me. If I see one more fallen arch, I'll scream. Guess who? Why, hello, Prince Henry. What a surprise. I'll bet. Do I have to? Trust me, it won't fit. Do it. Harder, Arlene. <coughs> Tough luck. <sighs> Try me again. My feet were swollen. No, sorry. Maybe it'll fit me. You! <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Well, it, it's just Cinderella. She's nothing but a nothing. Madam, it takes one, as they say, to no one. Perfect fit. I found my princess. Thank you. I was looking for that shoe everywhere. She cheated! Oh, I knew it was her all along. So, son, now we can all be one happy royal family. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Very good, Mother. <laughs> well, now, let's get you out of those rags for good. Pardon me for asking, who is that magic woman? This is my fairy godmother. She brought us together. Thank you, dear lady. You're welcome, your highness. But fairy godmother, don't you think it's a bit cruel to turn them into rabbits? Oh, they'll be back to normal at midnight. Midnight? Midnight? Then that explains why... Not only handsome, but smart. <laughs> I assume you'll be staying for the wedding. Honey, who do you think's gonna give away the bride?
and they lived happily ever after. And who would know better than a fairy godmother? I'm Shelley Duvall. I'd like to give you a brief glimpse at a project that I've been producing for the last two years called Fairy Tale Theater. Since I was a child, I've been in love with the heroes and villains, the magic and the morals of fairy tales. When I was 17, I began collecting antique illustrated volumes of the classic fairy tales. Over the years, my collection has grown somewhat. In talking about the tales with my friends and fellow actors, I found that all of them, young and old alike, were enchanted and excited about the possibility of performing the stories, dramatizing the tales in the style of the old master illustrators, with the video magic of modern technology, and just a touch of humor. And so, with the love of fairy tales, and a little help from my friends, Fairy Tale Theater transfers these classic stories from the printed page to the television screen. Robin Williams and the Frog Prince. Uh, there's a, uh, <coughs> frog outside, sir. <gasps> oh, a horrid toad. Ooh, a nasty princess. A and I am not a toad, I am a frog, and fiercely proud of. Who said that? I did. Who is that? He is the frog. What's your name? Uh, uh, Prince Robin. Uh, 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 guards, uh, throw him into the deepest dungeon no, you can uh, find. No, no, please, no, no, please. No, no, you can't. Well, I, I'm naked. <gasps> Elliot Gould and Jean Stapleton are the giants in Jack and the Beanstalk. Hi, honey. Hey, hi, ho, ho. I smell a bud of an English bud. Christopher Reeve and Bernadette Peters in Sleeping Beauty. Such beauty could crown my enterprise. You're too beautiful. You're too pure. You're too good. Do I dare to wake you to the reality? Or am I dreaming now? I kept you. The Emperor of all Cathay, 
will now express his thoughts. Why should I? Mick Jagger in The Nightingale. I wish I had my own little son. Mother! <laughs> no, but that's a cute. I'm going to call you Pinocchio. Pinocchio? Not Pinocchio, Pinocchio. Oh. 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 Something is wrong with Pinocchio. Uh, no, just a little itch. Fairy tale theater has attracted the talents of some of the most popular actors from the world of films, television, and the theater. Their reasons for doing them? Well, all of them love the uniqueness of the roles. 